Hey everybody, it's Tom Foster here, and it is our webinar day. It is September 17th, 18th. Tomorrow is my son's 18th birthday. Congratulations. Can you believe that? Anyway, um, we are very excited uh, to have our one and only Mindy Weinstein on the call with us as usual to talk about um, a very important topic which is how to attract your perfect clients. Our last webinar was dedicated to defining your perfect clients. This is the attraction part of the series. The next one we'll talk about converting your perfect clients, and then the next one we'll talk about retaining them. This is a very important part of it, though, because um, once you've identified who you want to target, uh, you've got to go after them. And so for the next 45 minutes, we're going to talk about how to do that. Um, these are all things that anyone can implement with success. There's no rocket science. It's not a, a magic purple pill. Uh, you don't need to have a degree in SEO or a degree in anything except, you know, you just have to sit down and actually do the work. And so I also have uh, my good buddy Mike Canadam in here with me who will be doing our social media. Right, Mike? Yep. Good afternoon, everybody. And so Mike is kind of like the Ed McMahon of the group. Or are you like uh, the... Who's the band guy? Paul, you're like that dude. Mindy, I'm like Mindy's Ed McMahon, and you're like <laughs> Paul, the, the, the bald uh, guy that plays the piano, except you're not bald. Okay, well, anyway, I digress. Um, so this should be a good webinar, and so, Mindy, tell us a little bit about how to attract. Wait, before we talk about this, we should go to plug in about the big summit that we have coming up. What is the summit? When is it again? October 12th and 13th. October 12th and 13th, which is the Great Legal Marketing Summit here in um, Crystal City, an awesome hotel. It's going to be a fantastic time. We're going to talk all about this, attract, convert, retain. Uh, Brian, uh, <laughs> Brian Mitchell, I spaced on his last name. Can you believe that? I B. Mitch, legendary football player, one of my favorite football players of all time. We'll be keynoting it. Pretty excited about that. If you want to find out more about that, you're not coming um, already. It's GLM Summit 2012.com. GLM Summit 2012.com. Check that out. Okay, and so with no further ado, uh, Mindy Weinstein, please tell us all about how to attract your perfect clients. Great, thanks, Tom. Um, I'm excited to continue with our series. So last month we talked about how to define your perfect clients, which is the important first step. I mean, you can't do anything else until you know who you're going after. But once you define your perfect client, then what? Well, the next step is attracting them. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today and um, giving you a lot of different tips that you can start implementing right away. So that's the purpose of these webinars too. It's not just to talk at you, but to actually give you actionable items, things you can do, things you can implement, you know, as soon as you're done listening to our webinar. So let's get started. Um, just kind of a recap from last time, which is really what I just said, before you can work on attraction, you have to identify your perfect clients. Um, you have to know who it is that you're targeting and how you are going to reach that person. So last time, um, just in case you missed that webinar, you know, we talked about some things to identify with your perfect clients. We even gave you a quiz that you could go through to help you um, with this definition. And if you haven't done that yet, I would recommend that you watch that webinar. So if you watched it last time, watch it again. If you missed it, you need to go back and watch it. And um, spend time defining your perfect client. Because if you don't do that, everything that we're talking about today isn't really going to be that helpful for you. So you have to know who your perfect client is and then work on attracting. So how do you attract your perfect client? I mean, that's the big question of the day. And um, a lot of what we're going to be talking about, you know, we are going to talk about some SEO, of course, content. We're always going to talk about content no matter what because content is super important. But also some other things on attracting your perfect clients through social media through paid advertising, which we'll get to, and then you also have to monitor your results, and you have to know what's working and what's not working. And again, you can attract thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people to your website. You could have 20,000 visitors every month, 
hey, every day even, but it doesn't matter if they're not your perfect client. So all of this needs to be geared towards your perfect client, the person who you would love 100 of those type of clients or 100 types of those cases. So that is um, very important. So we're just going to break it down. So each of these points is what we're talking about today. So we are going to start with content. Now, you need to create the right kind of content. And I feel like a lot of times we tell you, you need to be adding content. You need to be adding content. Okay, that's great. Well, what does that mean? Because again, you could add content, but if it's not the right kind or not pulling in the traffic from what you identify as your perfect clients, then it's really not good content, in my opinion. Um, so you need to first identify, you know, what do your perfect clients care about? So if you identified that your perfect client is um, someone who has been seriously injured and in maybe a car accident in a certain location, or maybe you're even going after a certain gender, you need to think about the things that that person cares about. Because everything that you're going to create, every blog post, every article, every news item, every frequently asked question, everything that you're going to write, you're going to be thinking about that perfect client. So you need to even spend time before you start writing. Picture them in your head. Actually take that time. Picture them and then start writing because that's going to make a difference. So with that, you also need to think about what questions um, do your perfect clients ask you. So if you already have, if you've worked with a perfect client before, which hopefully you at least have one, you know, think about the questions that that person asks you. You know, there are going to be certain things that um, are asked over and over again, as you well know. So think about that. Even write down the list of questions that you get on a regular basis. And really your content can be generated around that. You can keep expounding on your content. So you just need to think about, um, again, the things that are going through their mind, and your content needs to address that. But then there's a third point. Lynn, let me jump in here real quick. Um, and, and just so you know, guys, and I know maybe you're going to go into this in more detail, but this is, an, this is not rocket science. This is actually easier than you think it is. Um, it, and it, in, it, in a way, you have to, like, when Mindy's saying think about the questions that they ask you, don't think about the hard questions. Think about the easy questions that they ask you over and over and over and over again. Like, for instance, you know, something as simple as how much does it cost, uh, you can create content. Uh, we get asked the same question, you know, what's a page title? What's a meta description? You know, what are keywords? What's pay-per-click? You know, still people don't know what PPC means, and still people don't know what SEO means. You might think that's crazy, but I still answer that question at conferences when I, when I go out and speak. So don't be afraid to, to get very simplistic. That's where you should start. But it should always be really targeting that perfect niche client. That's, I and, that yeah, up. I think that that's a really good point because the thing is, you're right, because for us, you know, Tom and I, we, we talk about content. We talk about web marketing all the time. So page title, to us, that's my simple thing. But again, I get that question all the time. So yeah, exactly. You need, even if you think it's too simple, it doesn't mean it's too simple for your, your perfect clients. And I think that's a really good point um, to include. So kind of moving down, you know, once you kind of think about those questions, you know who your perfect client is. Your tone and style of your content does make a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. So if you are, you know that your client you know, mainly consists of um, you know certain education level or a certain background, or if it's more males versus females, your content should be addressing that particular tone and style. I know we all have our preferred tones and styles that we use in writing. Whether you think you do or you don't, you do. Trust me, I've seen enough content to know that. But you don't want to get stuck on your own tone. You want to think about what's going to reach your perfect clients better. So if, it's, if you know, for instance, that more women search for this particular topic, then you need to write in that way. Maybe have more of a softer tone, go more to the emotions, besides just going to the facts. I mean, you have to think about those things because it does make a really big difference. And even the education level, too, um, if you're going after a certain level, a higher level, well, your content's going to be written a little bit different. So you really need to think about that because it makes a difference. You know, we've talked about bounce rates in the past. So a bounce rate basically is just a refresher. If someone arrives at your page, they don't like what they see, they hit the back button really quickly, then that increases your bounce rate on your website or on that page. And that's not a good thing. You don't want a high bounce rate. 
So even the tone and style can make a difference on that. So you need to make sure once you know who your perfect clients are, you know what they ask, that you are writing directly to them. That's important. It's all important, so I'm probably going to keep saying it's important for like every point that I say. But it's all important. So creating the right kind of content, um, I believe I mentioned this last time and probably the time before, in a great way to make sure that you are posting content and you're posting the right kind of content is to make a calendar for yourself. I mean, there's such thing as an editorial calendar. I didn't make that up. So I mean, you could do that for your content. So for the month of September, you would map out exactly what you're going to be posting each day. At a bare minimum, you should have one post scheduled each day. So you'd want to map it out ahead of time, make your plan. I'm sure you guys make plans in your day-to-day -day businesses, you know, how the goals you're setting and the plan to get there. Same thing with your content. Make your goal on how, much, how many items you want to post and make sure that you have your plan or your calendar that's going to help you get there. So again, that's something that makes it easier for you too. And just a reminder too, in DSS, you can post content or you can upload your content um, all at once really into DSS. So if you have Let's say you already wrote 20 content pieces. You could put it all in there, and then you can schedule it so one's posting each day. So whatever works best for you, um, we make it. We do make it easy. Let me talk about that real quick too, because you know a lot of uh, attorneys and doctors and other professionals they don't really have, or it's difficult to find the time to write the content. Um, and that's a great point that you bring up about being able to schedule it. You know, some of our best clients like the likes of Michelle Davis. They all started out, you know, this is Michelle, the famous Michelle Davis, Chris Davis's wife, who does all of his marketing. Um, you know, they Chris Davis was nowhere to be found, nowhere at all, anywhere before Michelle got involved. And um, she ended up doing like six hundred pieces of content the first month and all that, but she has a schedule. She has a calendar that she doesn't own. Um, but, you know, for those of you that, that are in trial and in depositions um, and are busy, you just need to make the time. And you could do it on a Sunday afternoon, a Saturday, uh, in the evening, in the morning, whichever. But, you know, carve out the time and schedule it all out. And the other thing, and I bet you're going to do this when you talk about this maybe, but, you know, you don't have to write 50 unique themes. You could take a mm -hmm. theme and break it up into five different pieces of content and that meets the need too. Um, it's really just about feeding the engine. You don't go buy a car and then never put gas in it and then wonder why you're never going anywhere. It's pretty obvious. And this content is the fuel for your website. Content is the fuel for your social media. Um, you know, we wouldn't be able to, Michael wouldn't be able to post social media stuff if we didn't have stuff to attach to, right? Absolutely. Another the thing is, uh, you know, link building. People don't link to you if you don't have good content. And believe me, there's people out there that are desperate to find good links to link to, but they're not going to do it for junky content. That's all. No, that's good. And you know, one thing about that, just to kind of play on content and even how it affects social media, I was reading an article that was posted just a couple days ago and is about the future of SEO because so much is changing, of course, with Google and a lot of things are getting more social, more local. And so, um, you know, one of the quotes from the article, which just goes exactly to what we're saying, is SEO today demands a sophisticated blend of content creation, on-page optimization, which of course goes with content, structuring, distribution, amplification, authorship, and socialization. So. You know, we have the authorship taken care of for you in DSS. You want to tag yourself as the author. You need to be social, which I'm going to get to that, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself. And you need to make sure that you are creating that content, you're optimizing that content, you're distributing that content, and, you know, the links will come. I mean, I'm going to talk about link building in a moment, but it just shows, it's just different. It's, it's more natural now, and we've said that before, but it's going to continue to be that way. So when we tell you to add content, we're not just saying it because we can't think of something else to tell you. It's because it's that important. So this is all. If you're not doing it already, you need to start. And you need to probably boost your effort, most likely, from what I've seen from a lot of that's been posted. You know, I already talked about the second point on this PowerPoint slide, so I'll skip that. You know, I'm talking about the interests and concerns of your perfect clients. I think you guys are good there. But you need to understand, too, that you need a mix of content. That's a question I get a lot is, well, can't I just write all blog posts and that's good enough? 
Not really. I mean, you need to have a mix. You should have informative articles that would go in the library section of DSS. You need to have blogs, too. They are good. You need to have frequently asked questions. I mean, people search questions. Make sure that your, the way you structure your question is, some, is in a way that someone would actually search it. And you should have news. I mean, I even get the question of why bother with the news, but news does generate traffic. You know, people like to look up, you know, situations that are similar to their own. So if they see that you posted about something um, and it sounds very similar to what they've gone through, they might contact you. So you need to have a mix. That's really um, huge when it comes to content. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's some common excuses that we hear about content, and I think I was a little bit nicer in my responses to like my initial reaction to the things that I hear, but you want to avoid the common excuses. I mean, we can make excuses about everything really in life to not do something, but in this situation, it's not the time to make an excuse why you can't be adding content to your side. So, and you want to make sure you're taking action. So that one of the most common things I hear is I'm too busy to write. Well, you know, I put then hire someone to do it for you. I mean, that is a logical way. If you're too busy and you, there's just no way that you can carve out even a small amount of time, one day a week, then hire someone to do it for you. But if you don't want to hire someone and you still feel too busy to write, here's one thing I want to challenge you is that I've talked to, I have talked with a lot of our clients who are all extremely busy and a lot of them are still posting content. They're not making excuses. They're busy. We're all busy, but they're still finding the time. It's a matter of setting it on your calendar, how to create your content calendar. If there's a certain day of the week that's a little bit less busy for you, sit down, black out time, write a lot of content in that day, schedule it to post you know, the rest of the week, the rest of the month um, in DSS. So too busy to write, that's not a very good excuse in my opinion. I agree with you. I mean, like, this is your business. What are you talking about? You're too busy to manage your own business and put effort into it. You know, a lot of uh, you guys are uh, personal injury lawyers, and um, you know you're you're rewarded pretty well for um, your efforts once you win a case. You need to invest in those cases. If you want the million dollar case, you have to invest in it. And so, by you know just throwing up a website and then not doing any, anything about it. Um, that's that's just not going to cut, it. and so you you really need to do that. I mean, you know, you're too busy to write. You don't know what to write about. There's a, you know the other option that you don't have here is uh, not doing anything at all, which is what a lot of people do, right, Mindy? And they're right. like, it's not working. You know, there's something wrong with the website. There's nothing wrong with the website. There's something wrong with you and you getting your priorities right about what you need to be doing with your time to invest in your own marketing of your own practice. And so the DSS gives you all the tools. We give you all the education. Here's how you do it. We tell you how to write a page title. We tell you how to write a headline. We put on these webinars for you. We tell you exactly how to do it. It's a list of exercises and all the things that you need to do to be successful. And so, but one option is just not to do it. You might as well just Shut, you know, shut down your website. What's the point if you're not going to invest in it? So, you know, but certainly if you don't have time, then hire someone to do it for you. And, and don't complain that you don't have the money either. You can find the money uh, to have someone write for you. And, and by doing that, you will fuel the site, you will fuel your visitors, and you will be able to start converting those visitors into clients. But it just doesn't happen. Just so your car does not drive without gas. And you're talking about, well, you don't know what to write about. Well, go ahead, Mindy. Talk about all the different things and suggestions on how you figure out what to write about. Yeah, well, I was just thinking of what you're saying, too. You know, one of the other things is, well, how, you know, here, well, how come this competitor is above my website in search results? I don't get it. Well, most of the time, I mean, I'd say majority of times when we do an analysis, it's they have more pages than you do. They have more index pages. I mean, links are part of it. We'll get there. But majority of the time it's they have more pages. They've been writing more content than you're writing, so they're showing up above you in search results. So you have to do it. You don't or, they've been at, or they've had a website longer than, than you. Mm -hmm. That's another big one is that you know a lot of people are like, well, my website's so much prettier than this guy's. Well, <laughs> he decided to get a website 10 years before you. Right. So going to be rewarded for that, um, even if maybe he doesn't have as much content as you do. So you know this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. You're going to hear that. 
I'm sure you've heard it before from us, and you're going to hear it again and again. I mean, like, those are just the facts. And we're going to tell you the truth. That's another thing is that I'm sure that you get emails and phone calls and from guys who are like, oh, yeah, 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 you know, it'll take me a couple of weeks, and you'll be on page one for this and that and this and that. Don't believe it. There's a scam there somewhere because organically you're not going to be on page one because someone flip, flicks a switch. It's not how it works. It's usually involving some kind of pay-per-click scam or some, you know, you're involved in some kind of directory scam or, or something like that. So be very careful about how you're being seduced by these, you know, it's really get-rich-quick schemes. And those never, never work. Right, or you may get on page one for like a week and then you're penalized by Google for and banished. So you got to be careful. Yeah, or you're on page one for stuff that you don't care about anyway and won't right. bring you any cases. Don't be seduced by vanity keywords. It's another thing we always talk about. Exactly. So we're well, going back to this. You know, I don't know what to write about. Not a good excuse. I mean, we've told you what to write about. You can even monitor the news. I mean, that's one of the easiest ways to figure out what to write about. You can write about your past cases. I actually think that is a phenomenal topic. So if you've just settled a case or you've just resolved a case, write about it. And I know there are some confidentiality issues, so maybe you don't have to say their name, but you can still talk about the type of case because, again, when people are searching, they want to see if you know how to represent their type of situation. They want to know if you have experience with their type of case. They want to know if you've written about it. And so that is just a great way, great content idea. And I'm not talking about just case results. I'm talking about blogging about it too, doing other pieces about it. So that's really important. Okay, so another one here, you know, we... The amount of content you need to write really depends on your competitors, but as a rule of thumb, we generally say 30 to 50 items um, each month is, is good. And usually there's that gasp when we say that, like, that's just too many items, there's no way. Well, again, your competitors are likely doing it, so they figured out a way, so you should too. And uh, one of the last excuses I have on here is, you know, since we're already working on link building, we don't need content. You need links and content. I mean, you can't just take one piece of the puzzle and say, okay, we're good. I mean, you have to put everything together to have a really solid position in search results, a solid web marketing campaign. So you need, you need to have content as well. So moving let's on from content. For, let's back up for that. For okay. Um, the 30 to 50 items. Uh, this, this will vary depending upon what you do. Mm -hmm. And it could be more. Um, it, it depends upon your location. Uh, it depends upon what your practice focus is. And so if you are in a very competitive area like New York and you're doing personal injury and you just were born um, into that world, just jettisoned out of law, you know, law school or decided to go on your own or woke, you know, woke up and said, wow, there's an internet. Um, don't expect that all you need to do is add a website and kabang, it's there. You might have to be doing 500 uh, articles every month. So, you know, just think about that. Uh, we have something, like I told you about Michelle Davis, she's in Seattle, and uh, Chris Davis does PI stuff. So, just know your competition, know the world you're in, know what investment you're going to need to make up front in order to be successful. Don't fool yourself. Once again, whether you're, you know, you're, where your web people or whoever is your web person, um, it's not their fault that you chose to live where you live and practice what you're doing. We're just trying to help you, and we're just honest about it. Here's what it's going to take. Uh, you might not like to hear it, but just like when you tell your clients what it's going to be like to go through their case, or you know, whether they've got a DUI or bankruptcy or or it's a personal injury. No one likes to hear about the work that they're going to have to do, but the facts are the facts, and we're not going to lie to you about it. So 30 to 50 items may be enough, may not be enough, may be way too much. Like if you're doing coin fraud and you're in Albuquerque, you probably don't need to do that much. So it really just depends upon your competition uh, in your geolocation and your practice areas. Sorry, Mindy, but I just wanted to throw that in there. No, that's great. Well, we are going to move on from content to SEO. So I think that's even just a good lead-in. You know, SEO, search engine optimization, that needs to be part of your web marketing. Content is really part of SEO, especially optimized content. But 
for this purpose of our presentation, I'm talking about different aspects that would be part of your SEO campaign. So that goes with researching your keywords, analyzing your competition, optimizing your web pages, going after high quality relevant links, and going local. So I'm going to touch on each of these in the next slide. So you, you really can't do a whole lot until you know what your perfect clients are searching for. I mean, really, if you don't know the keywords that they're going after or that they're typing in the search engine, you really don't know how to do your link building and you really don't know how to optimize your pages. So you need to first start with some keyword research. And a lot of that just comes in down to brainstorming, which I have on here. You know, how do people describe their situations? When potential clients call you, what are the words that they're using? You know, most likely it's not very legal terms or, you know, high medical terms probably just describing what's wrong with them. I mean, that's how most of us would approach a situation and we're, when we're trying to get help. So think about that and start jotting down the various things that you hear from clients, perfect clients especially. And then you also need to look at your competition. You know, what are your competitors, what kind of keywords are they going after? And then, um, please. Oh, I don't have too many. We've done presentations where we've gone even more into keyword research. But you want to, again, just think about what people are searching for and make sure that your content is wrapped around that, that it's optimized for those keywords, that your links that you're going after, that you, if you can, you want to make sure that those keywords are linked there too. Um, but one thing I didn't include in the slide, because keyword research is like a whole other beast. I mean, you can spend an hour on keyword research. But once you create a list, you know, just brainstorm, thinking about those search terms that you think that people would be using, you know, on Google and the various search engines, you can use uh, Google's uh, AdWords, it's their keyword, I'm totally butchering it, <laughs> I use it all the time, but it's the AdWords tool, you can search keywords on there, it's free, I mean we can send you the link, you can plug in some of the keywords that you brainstormed on your list in there and it will show you the volume of search that people are searching that keyword this many times per month, so you can know if it's a good keyword or not. But again, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but we can send you a link to that tool that I was just describing. And that's really only one of the things that you should be looking at for doing your keyword research mm -hmm. because as we know, we've been doing this for many years, many years, over all the seasons of Google and you name it. Um, and no matter what, we always can see that the, the um, short tail of vanity keywords Although a lot of our clients are at page one for those, that don't, those don't represent the perfect client. And so you need to be careful what you ask for. And so if you're spending all, and, and, and the other thing too, as we know, maybe is that, that getting the page one for those hugely competitive keywords requires time and resources, effort, mm -hmm. money, money. And, and, and you can spend three months, four, five, six months pining away to get on page one for such and such personal injury attorney because you see all your competitors there only to find out that that doesn't ever bring you a case. It only brings you the SEO people and other attorneys. Um, and, and, and that's what we see all the time. It, if you ask any one of our clients what the best kinds of keywords that brings the best clients in, it will be difficult for them to give you, oh, these keywords, because it's a range of very long tail, very specific keywords, except maybe for their own name. And generally what happens with that is that someone is doing a long tail search for something specific, and I'm talking about the best kinds of clients. I'm not talking about people that are sitting at home all day watching Judge Judy and complaining about their problems with no insurance. That's not what you guys are looking for. Um, but it's the people that do, you know, the soccer moms, the ones that have, uh, the, that, that do have the right insurance, that are easy clients to work with, the perfect clients that we're looking for, that are doing research. And we know that these people come in three to 12 months after initial contact. So as long as you're doing other, all the other stuff right that we've been talking about before uh, and that we will talk about later, which is the stuff you have to do to convert and retain them. Um, generally what happens is that people come back and you'll see a lot of searches for your own name and a lot of searches for your own for the firm because they've done a lot of research and they're like you know I want to I want to work with Joe Smith and then they go back and do a search for your name 
So you need to do a lot of study and measurement and analysis yourself on the best keywords that have brought you business in the past. Otherwise, you're going to chase after phantoms. I can tell you right now that we're on our, our own company, you know, we're on page one for attorney web design, and that's a, that's a vanity keyword, right? Many of we talk about mm -hmm. this ourselves. And, you know, the 12 years that I've been doing this, and we've been measuring keywords for a few of those years, um, I don't know anybody that we've brought in uh, based on that particular keyword, although I do want to be on page one for it, and it costs me money to be there, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Because I got to put the content, I got to do the link building, I do, I got to do the pay per click. It's my choice to spend the money to be there. But the point is that that doesn't bring me business. It's the long tail stuff, the people doing questions, and we ask the questions properly that actually get into our campaigns and eventually become clients or not. So think broader, think bigger, think more niche, think perfect client. That's the whole point of this: is attracting the perfect client, not attracting a bunch of junk. Okay. Good old fashioned brainstorming. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking too, I mean in DSS, you know, we have the contact keywords. You can see what someone typed in to find you and that's also a little helpful hint. You know, those are conversion keywords. That means that, like Tom just said, they're not necessarily going to be like vanity keywords. You know, sometimes it'll be your name because they've already searched for you anyway. They found you, then they went back and searched your name again and they contacted you. That's normal, but then there'll be, you'll notice there's like the longer sentences for those contact keywords. So I think that's great. I mean, you do, again, the whole point, you can have tens of thousands of people going to your site, but you want them to actually convert. You want to attract the right kind of people. So analyzing competition, you know, you need to know what are your competitors doing to attract perfect, perfect clients. And the thing is, you can find out this information. You need to, you need to first see what links they're pointing to their websites. You know, there's lots of tools out there. Um, Open Site Explorer is one where you can you know, get an idea of who's already linking to my competitor. What other websites are, you know, giving them that link juice, basically. And if they're linking to your competitors, they still link to you. So that's one of the easiest ways to get links. But you need to see who's pointing to them, how many links they've got. You can even see what keywords they're targeting. Now, the thing is, you don't know because you're looking from the outside. You don't know if the keywords they are targeting, they might be vanity keywords, again, so you don't know if those are converting, but you can at least get an idea of what's going on with your competition. And I mentioned this earlier, you can look at the number of index pages they have. You know, how much content do they, do they already have in the search engine's indexes? And so that's a really important thing to keep an eye on, too. Because if they're above you in search results, you have to look at all these things. And like Tom mentioned, also the age of their domain, how long have they been around on the internet already? So it's, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. It doesn't matter if you're the best on the web. You don't have to be better than everybody. You just only want to be better than your comp your competitors. That's it. You just want to be above them. You don't need to be above everybody else, all the gazillion websites out there. You just need to be better than your competitors. So you should have an idea of what they're doing. Hey, another real quick thing, and, and I think the, I'm not sure if you're going to get to it in this one, Mindy, but you know, talking about our breaking news and doing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to be getting into that? No, nope, go ahead. All right, well, let's talk about that real quick for content because to me that's one of the coolest things to do um, is, you know, people respond to what's going on in the media, people respond to what's going on in the news, and um, uh, if, you, if there's a way within your business, in your practice, to attach yourself to what's going on in the news, uh, what's going on with celebrity, it can do a lot to drive traffic to your site. Especially, you know, it's very difficult to find unique and interesting things to talk about uh, when it comes to, to injuries and accidents, unless there's a celebrity or somebody, something else involved. Um, just talking about, hey, you know, here's another car accident on, on, on the five, that's, that's not going to bring you anything, um, except maybe, you know, some hurtful words. But if you are attaching yourself to things that are happening in the news, and there's always something going on. Uh, for instance, we have a client uh, up in uh, Seattle, another client up in Seattle, divorce attorney, who um, started uh, adding blog posts about, I think it was some basketball or, or football star that got into some trouble with their divorce or their family. It's all over the place it's happening to sports people. But that's really the point. 
And so they did a story about it, and they got a link from Huffington Post. And Huffington Post is a high authority site. That uh, hey, guess what? If they hadn't had that 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 blog post, they wouldn't have gotten the link. And so they added something that was interesting and relevant to their business, and that brought them tons of visitors and tons of authority from Huffington Post. So think about that kind of stuff. I mean, like, what can you connect with? Um, and one great source, and, and you might giggle at this, but you're going to hear me say it over and over again, TMZ. TMZ is amazing, and I scan it all the time because it gives me a ton of ideas about how to connect. People on TMZ, I mean, TMZ is run by that lawyer out there, and it's TMZ is with a 30-mile zone, and it's, it's where paparazzi and whatever are allowed to go mess with celebrities around Hollywood. I know too much about it, don't I, Mike? Mike's <laughs> um, But really, truly, uh, from a business standpoint, athletes, celebrities are always getting in trouble. I mean, like, Amanda Bynes going crazy is big time talk right now. There's stuff that you can say about that. Lindsay Lohan, always in trouble, stealing something, or, uh, you know, the, the, some sports celebrities. Uh, Evander Holyfield, you know, having to pay, like, back, pay on his child support. I mean, like, these guys are always in trouble. All you need is get involved in that conversation, and you will attract those people that are, in, that are interested in that conversation to you. And it's a, it, it's a much different kind of thing than when you're talking about something that they're interested in, than, hey, call me, you know, for the next time you get injured or somebody you know gets injured. Be more interesting and connect yourself with your clients and your perfect perfect clients and your perfect patients. Okay, go ahead. And I think that I think that actually even goes with the next, you know, I didn't have necessarily the news and the breaking news thing, but you know, links they're still a signal to search engines right now. Um, so if you have high authority links, quality links pointing to your website, like Tom mentioned, Huffington Post is a good one. That's good. That helps you um, helps you improve your rankings in search engines. So that's really good. And um, I don't want to touch a whole lot on this because I think what you just said goes along with it. You know, you, nowadays you can even do link building naturally. I mean, if you're writing that good content, you're writing about things that people care about, your perfect clients are searching for, you're going to attract links that way. Other websites are going to link to you. So it's a lot about PR. Um, you want to reach out to websites that are important to your perfect clients too on that note. So I mean, again, it's natural. It's not so different than um, SEO in the past. I mean, SEO of today, again, is just about building relationships. It's about making a name for yourself online. But there's also the aspect of doing things that are offline too that can get you links. And um, we're going to be talking about that in one of the upcoming webinars, a lot about community involvement and so forth. But the things that you do in your neighborhood, in your community, those things can attract links too. So I mean, if you're giving out scholarships, if you're involved in a charity event, if you sponsor some type of neighborhood, um, whatever it might be, concert, rally, whatever, a lot of times you can get a link for that. You can do press releases. I mean, there's so many things um, that you can do nowadays that were different than before. It's not so much manipulation now. It's, it's involvement. It's being natural. It's marketing. It's marketing. That's what links of today are all about. Yeah, and I mean, th they can make a huge, huge difference. One link from a .edu site or .org mm -hmm. site could, you know, crush a thousand links, a, a thousand competitor links from, from junky directory sites. Um, I, I won't mention any names, although I always like to, but I won't. But uh, maybe you'll recall when we, and we, we like tend to argue with our clients about this. Like, why does that matter? You know, like, what's so important about that? Well, you know, I don't probably understand the importance of doing 38 depositions before going to trial, but hey, that's your business, and you know it. And so, okay, we do it your way. In the SEO world, in the web marketing world, let's do it our way. We know what we're doing. So listen, this works. So one example is remember how long we had to chase after this particular client to get a, uh, a link from where he's an alumni professor mm -hmm. at a very popular college, university, that we chased him to get that link for, for months. He, and he just kind of blew it off, blew it off, and then finally we got it, and it catapulted his site for that particular link and that for what he was doing. 
like what was it like 11 or 12 pages overnight and the, thing, and the thing about it for him to actually add it is just a matter of adding in his bio where he works with the link like you know that he's founded this law firm and he put the link in there I mean so it wasn't like once it was done it wasn't like it was a big time commitment and that's why you know it wasn't done it you know, probably took less than five minutes and made a huge difference yeah and it's it, you know it's no different from that little and 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 of all people lawyers understand complexity and so this is complex and there's a lot of pieces to it and so just like when you're building a case or you know when you're when you're uh, putting together your brief and you know the, the bigger the case if you're going to trial all the different details that you have to look at th th there's no difference here except that this is a case that you never actually take to trial your web business never ends so you constantly have to think about um, what are my opportunities and maybe you even want to go teach somewhere um, you know at a local university uh, that that is well known if you have that opportunity and get on the on on the staff. You'll get a link from a .edu or associations. Think about you know the other community and charity uh, events that you participate in and that you've given money to and gotten nothing uh, in return in, ter in terms of links or PR or anything like that. These are all opportunities that all of you have. You've all done it before, and so this is the these are the links that really count. These are the links that that Google is looking for, they're the real deal. And what Mimi said is the truth. SEO has completely changed. Um, you know, Penguin really just started getting rid of all these stupid links. That that was the point of Penguin. And it's not done, it's still doing it. And it's just going to get better and better and better. And so um, just spend the extra time. Uh, work with a, a link building company. And if you're working with us already, you should work with us because we know what we're doing. You don't want to have two coaches on your team telling, telling your team to do two different things. Um, anyway, so yes, link building, and you just said it uh, um, maybe a minute ago, and I'm glad you did. It's different than it once was. You did have to game the system before with link building, and now that same game will hurt you. And it is, all, it is back to what it's always been about, which is good, relevant content. If you build good, relevant content, the links will come. Sometimes you got to help them along, though. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and talk about local because local is a big component now um, with web marketing. You know, we all grab our iPhones, our Droids, our tablets, whatever we're looking at for our local searches. And I didn't put the statistic in here, but I've quoted it before. I mean, the majority of searches online involve a location. And think about how you search. I'm sure you're doing that. Grab your phone. If you're looking something up, a lot of times it has to do with a location. A particular business in the location, a service, a product, whatever it might be. So your your perfect clients are doing the same thing. You can't separate yourself from that and say, well, I don't know about that. But your perfect clients are also looking for you in their local area. So local SEO needs to be part of your traction plan. So what exactly does that mean? Because I feel like local is just so vague. When people hear that, they have no idea what we're talking about. So I will tell you. Um, local SEO includes listings on Google. So it would be Google plus local on Bing Local and Yahoo Logo. Local. Neil was going to say it wrong. That's why I didn't put local in that bullet point. It's um, hard to say but, those words. It's hard to say them all. So you want to make sure that you're, not only that you have a listing, because I mean you get one, I mean generally on Google Plus, it's gonna, locals are going to have a listing, but you need to make sure that you claim it, that you add information to it, you add pictures, you add videos, you take that extra step, because that's going to go a long way in helping you rank for local searches. So that's step one, make sure you're doing those. And then there's also local directories. I'm not talking about junkie directories that we were just saying were past SEO. I'm talking about any local sites that are advertising businesses and so forth. Um, even things like, well, I have Yelp for reviews, but Yelp, Yellow Pages, Super Pages, you know, all of those, you want to make sure that you're listed and that goes with local citations. So you want to make sure your business is listed there, that your business is listed the same on each site. So that means that if you spelled out street on one site, that you make sure you spell it on the next site, that you don't abbreviate it. So it has to be the same and conform um, to all your listings. Now, there is a tool because local citations, again, that's a whole other beast, and it can take up a lot of your time. But there's some tools out there that make it really easy for you. Um, Yext 
yext.com is a great website. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer, um, that's yext.com. But that will help you with your local citations. You pay a small monthly fee, totally worth your time, and you'll make sure that all your local citations are taken care of. And that's big, and that makes a difference with local search. But then there's another, so all these things you can control. I mean, you can work on your listings. You can work with those local directories, local citations. You have control over that. Reviews, that's a little trickier. Um, you can encourage your clients to give you reviews, but you, all, you can't necessarily force them to do so or you shouldn't force them to do so, that's bad. But you want reviews in lots of places. So Google Plus Local, of course, you want reviews there. You also want reviews with Bing Local, Yahoo Local, Yelp. I mean, there's a lot of sites. You want reviews on Avo. The thing about that is you don't know where your perfect clients necessarily are going to come to review or to read your reviews, so you need to make sure that you are spreading them out, that you're in lots of places. So reviews are big. Um, a lot of our clients will create like a domain that they, you know, direct to uh, review sites just to make it easier for their clients. So there's a lot of different ways to go about it. Um, but you need to make sure that your clients are reviewing you. That's important. You can't control what they say, but you at least can try to encourage them to give you good feedback. Well, do a good job, and, the, and you can control what they say about you. And That's you know true. what? It, it's interesting um, because uh, we get a lot of pushback from clients on, on, you know, well, where do I go? And you just said it. All of these places. Mm -hmm. Look, if no one is saying that this is getting easier, okay, it's getting less complicated. Well, it's not getting less complicated. I shouldn't even say that. It's getting easier for you to do it, but it is just more stuff for you to do. You don't need, like, SEO is no longer, oh, this is, you know, some kind of science I can't do myself, which maybe it once was, but that's not the case anymore. You can do all this yourself. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do. It's a lot. Um, of things that you need to do to be successful. But here's the thing, is that most people won't do it. And the thing is, something as simple as having reviews, having four or five reviews on your site, and your competition has zero or one or two, people will select you. It's no different than you selecting a, a plumber or a dentist or whatever else. And you have to look at it like that. What are you looking at? And um, all these things, very much matter. And here's the other point. Remember I said at the beginning that uh, a lot of people get contacts based on a name search or, a, you know, your firm name or your personal name. When someone does a search for you personally, go ahead and see what comes up. Go ahead and type your own name in the search box. And every one of these different places, if you're there, will show up. And if not, other people that have talked about you that you don't have control on will show up. And so, Whereas before we might have said, you know, buy 58 domains and 58 websites to capture uh, page one. Um, now it's really make sure that all your reviews and all your different, you know, places, and it's not 58 different websites because that'll just hurt you now. But all your different listings, all your different review sites, Avo, uh, Bing, Google, all those things show up uh, on that page search because you want to um, control that impression of. Like, we still have something that shows up for us. You type in Fox Web Marketing, it's not even true. You can't bury that, that web ops article. We can't bury that thing for the life of us. Um, and it has nothing to do. It's completely outdated, but it will influence. And we have lost business as a result of that one inaccurate posting. And so everybody's going to furiously go check out what that is. <laughs> check it out. It's, it's wrong. It was always wrong, and it, and it does has no relevance anymore. Um, but anyway, it's important. So you have to control people's perception of you when they are searching on the, the, the cesspool that is the Internet. I'm done. Well, we have a lot more slides to get through, so I'm going to kind of skim a little. Well, I'm going to skip this one and go to more social media on the next slide. Um, social media needs to be part of attraction. Definitely needs to be part of it. Um, it helps you develop trust with your perfect clients. Here's the different sites that you need to get involved in. I think you guys already know these, so I want to skip to the next slide. But you need to make sure you get on the social media scene. You just have to. It's no more of an argument. Well, I don't want to. I don't get it. You, you need to do it. You have to do it. I mean, it's a huge component now um, for attracting people to you. So you need to make sure you have a presence on each of the social media websites. Don't just pick one. Don't just say, well, I like Facebook better than the rest, so I'm not going to bother with the others. You need to be on all of them. 
And just like a content calendar, you should create a social media calendar. You can use programs like Hootsuite.com, which is free, and you can schedule your posts. So you know what you're going to say and you know, give helpful tips to people. Um, you can schedule those ahead of time. Don't preach at people, per se, or just tell them how smart you are. You, know, you want to be helpful. So you, know, you can provide advice, provide tips. If there's something going on in the news that you know, impacts your practice, you can comment about it on social media. But again, you can schedule your post in advance. But with that, you need to still be timely and relevant. So that's one way to at least get it going. You can, of course, you know, make sure your blogs and articles are connected to your social network so that they're populating. And any time a blog is posted, that it does go to your social network. But you need to be interactive, too. So you don't, you don't want to just have it all automatic. I mean, that's like the first step. But you also need to make sure that you're replying to people. You're reposting helpful information. You're commenting on what other people are saying. It's a conversation. But it is important because social, um, social media, Google loves social. I mean, they just do. They love local. That's what we just talked about. So if they love it, you need to love it, too. All right, I'm going to keep going just for the sake of time. Um, you know, one of the last things that I had in here is paid advertising. You know, most everything that we talk about is always your organic marketing, but it doesn't hurt to throw uh, paid advertising into the mix. So with paid advertising, there's different routes you can go. There's pay-per-click. So when we say PPC, that's what we're referring to. So that's an ad, like Google AdWords, where you would bid on a certain keyword, and your little ad would show up and someone searched that keyword. Um, so that's one way to go. There's also something called retargeting, also referred to as remarketing, and that's something that we've even tried out. So if someone goes to your website, they visited you, but they didn't contact you, they left, let's say, and you have a retargeting campaign going on, then anywhere that they go where there's Google display ads, they'll see your ad. It'll keep following them for a certain amount of time. So you stay in front of them. It's the whole theory of, you know, staying top of mind. You're right in front of them. They're not going to forget about you. They went to your website, but now you're showing up wherever they go. So, but that's a paid advertising opportunity. And you'd want to make sure you are creating ads and going after words that are geared towards your perfect clients because that's what this whole thing is about. And same thing with banner ads. So if you find some websites that you know your perfect clients visit on a regular basis, then consider purchasing banner ads on those websites. I mean, that way, again, you're going to be in front of your perfect clients. They'll see you, and hopefully they'll contact you. That's the whole point. And then even having your video commercials. I mean, you should be doing web video. No matter what you're doing, make sure that you have video as part of it. You can also do commercials, too. But again, all of these things you know, should be in combination with your other web marketing. So if you decide to go with paid advertising, it doesn't mean you don't have to write content. And it doesn't mean that you, have to, you can ignore social media or not try to get links. These are all complements to each other. Well, you could. You could ignore all the rest of it. And you will just spend more money and more money and more money. The, the organic piece is to build the foundation. And so, the, pay, the paid stuff right here is some quick jump, but that's not inexpensive. I mean, I don't reckon, you know, there's no pay-per-click campaign that you should do that's going to cost you, you know, especially for a PI lawyer, less than a two grand a month. It's just a, a waste of time. The competition is too great. Um, but yeah, video commercials, uh, doing commercials nowadays um, is much less expensive. Media buying is much less expensive than it was. So look at those options. But just don't be a spaz about it and put it everywhere. Where's your perfect client? Is there a way to reach your perfect client directly? What television stations do they watch? Do you know? That's the, you should invest some time and energy in finding that person and being where they are. Keep going, Amy. Exactly, and that's really what <laughs> the next slide was about. I mean, you're wanting to direct your perfect client to your website. I mean, that's what you're trying to do. So even if you're advertising offline, let's say you have newspaper ads or billboards, or you're advertising somewhere else, maybe radio, still direct people to your website. You can make your offline and your online marketing work together. I've seen it done, and it works nicely. So all these things that we've talked about, you know, they're all great. But again, if you are attracting people to your website, but they're not your perfect clients, well, then you've got to revisit what you've done because it means you haven't done it right or maybe you need to improve. 
And it's a constant cycle. You'll constantly be improving what, you're, what you've done before. So you need to take a look first at your web visitors. You know, you've done all these things. You're adding content. You've got links. You're doing the social media. You're doing everything. But now take a look. Are the visitors that you're getting to your website, are they the right kind of visitors? You know, where are they coming from? That's a huge question. You know, how many are viewing your website? And not only that, what pages are they visiting? That's important, too. You need to see where they're coming in. What are your top landing pages? You know, what are things that are attracting people's attention? And you can build upon that. So if it's not necessarily a landing page that you thought was the greatest, you know, try to improve it and fix it. You know, you want to make sure that you are getting not only just visitors, but you're getting the right kind of visitors. They're your perfect clients. So you might find that you need to adjust. Maybe you have visitors that are coming from a location that you would never represent. So again, you need to think about what kind of content you're writing, what is it that you're writing about that's making them come from that area, or what type of links are you know, generating traffic in that location. So they're all things that you need to look at. And not just web visitors, contacts. That's the other thing. Again, you can have tons of visitors, but if they're not contacting you and they're not your perfect clients, then you still need to review what you're doing and improve it. So take a look at how many contacts are you getting, and are they the type of contacts that you want. If the answer is no, that they're not, again, take a look at what you've done. Can you improve? And again, you have to maybe you have to hone in on the definition of your perfect client a little bit more if that's the case. And just a final slide for you too, you know, we go over a lot of information, but I want to make sure that you have takeaways, so things you can do right away. So the first thing, if you don't have a content or an editorial calendar, but I put content so you remember what I was talking about. If you don't have one, create one, start writing. There's no reason to wait. If you are not sure about the type of SEO you're doing, you know, just take a look at what you've done so far. Maybe it hasn't been anything, and maybe you need to boost it up. You know, maybe you need to add link building into the mix, or maybe you're not optimizing your pages correctly. Look for any holes and fill them in. The third thing, create a social media calendar, just like you would the content calendar, and make sure that you're involved in each social network. And do so right away. Don't wait. And the fourth thing I have on my list, you know, look for paid advertising opportunities. If, again, if you know where your clients are visiting, what websites they're going after, see if you can advertise there. You know, if you're interested in pay-per-click or retargeting, I mean, you could talk to us and we can point you in the right direction. And the last thing, things you could do right away, is Measure what you're doing now. Analyze it and see if you can improve it. I mean, those are all things that um, you can do immediately. So that's that. Uh, I think I made it with a few minutes to spare. I mean, that was our uh, all right, cool. covered got, everything. Oh, yeah, good job, Mindy. And I made it take way much longer as usual because I just can't stop yapping. All right, so Connie, any questions? Throw them up there. If not, um, I'm just going to say a couple extra things. Um, three. Three to uh, what? Mike, you got a question? Um, we actually have a question from Steve Richardson. Do you want me to do that? From Steve Richardson? Yes, we do. Amazing. Um, yeah, so does sharing your content on your social media outlets improve local SEO? Yes, sharing content and, get, and getting links back to your site, through your social media, improves local all SEO. So, yes. And then he also asks, how do you tweak a common substantive question for your perfect client and perfect clients ask them to you. It's a good one. I would make the offer very specific. So if you're getting uh, a general question but the you only want so let's say if you're getting a, a if you're answering a general bankruptcy question or a traffic uh, question Steve um, but you only want a certain kind of client, your certain perfect client from those questions, and you're able to say, well, in your mind, you know that this is not that perfect client. You would know that better than me. I would create an offer that is specific um, to to answering that question even more and eliminating, well, if you're this guy, we're not for you kind of thing, but if you're this guy and you want this, um, then doing it that way. Uh, that's, you know, that's just... You know, split testing, diving in more and more and more and more, and that's going to be a lot more about what we're going to talk about next time, just converting the perfect client after you attract them. A couple other real quick things. Uh, we're going over time. Did you have any more? Okay. Um, uh, 
couple quick things. One, um, link building. We offer a link building service. As long as there's good content to link build to, we can do it for you. We can't link build to uh, no content. So you have to have some good content to link build to. Um, it won't work otherwise. Other thing that, and so shoot me an email, uh, shoot any of us an email. Tom at Foster Web Marketing, Mike at Foster Web Marketing, Mindy at Foster Web Marketing, Connie at Foster Web Marketing, um, and uh, we'll be able to help you out with link building. Uh, the other thing is social media. We have a social media program where we help clients with social media that Mike heads up. Mike's very smart. He's a young guy, very smart when it comes to social media. He sits with me 15 minutes every day, me kicking and screaming. Um, on doing social media, how to, you know what goes to Facebook, what goes to uh, tw Twitter, what goes to LinkedIn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There is a science to it, and just setting it up on autopilot from RSS feed is a sure way to bore the crap out of everybody involved in your social media. And the last thing that I will say is, be careful who you get to coach your team. We have seen it, especially through this last Penguin update, clients tanking because they have listened to SEO people or, or have just set their SEO on autopilot and not even known. And we have had to help them get and dig out of uh, bad situations. Now that's where, you know, I'm not suggesting you put all your eggs in one basket, but you need to have one head coach. So if you've got multiple coaches coaching the team, you're never going to win a game because they're always going to send you in a different direction. They're going to use different playbooks. So be careful about that. We're here to help you. Um, we're here to educate you. We're always open to answer any questions. We have a coach that is assigned to you. Um, we have our customer service. We have our webinars. We're here to help you succeed. So don't be afraid to raise your hand if you're, if you're being challenged. Um, there's more than one way to, to win this game. And so just know that we're here to help you. Okay. Our next webinar is, when is it, Michael? It is October. October, one second, October 16th. October 16th, right after the summit. We'll be fresh off the uh, GLM Summit. Make sure that you check that out, glmsummit2012.com. Uh, come on out here to Crystal City and hang with us. Uh, we'll be showing off um, the Foster Web Marketing experience. If you're not already a client, what it's like to work with us, although this webinar is only for clients. So. You guys should come check it out, though. We've got a lot of cool things going on. We are here for you. Please uh, reach out and let us know how we can help. We're in this together. Mindy, thank you so much for putting this together. Fantastic. Well done. Connie, thank thanks. you for hosting it. And Michael, thanks for all your colorful commentary that I didn't let you say. Okay. Well, you've been doing it all online, huh? You don't even know what's going on over there. Okay, everybody. Hope to see you here at Crystal City next month. And uh, talk to you soon. Bye now. See you guys.